students, today I wanted to share an artist with you. Her name is Marianne Angeli Rodriguez. And I found her in a Southern Living magazine. She lives in Covington, Louisiana, and has a gallery that is housed in a building that is over 100 years old. I wanted to share her story with you to show you that sometimes our future is unknown and things from our past always frame our future. Mary Ann was very creative as a child and she now works with mixed media, which is very interesting. She says that her first dedication to making art was from her dad who traveled a lot for work. Um, she would always give him a handmade card every time he left home just to say how much she loved him and would miss him. You can see one of her fun, bright, energetic pieces here in the background of this picture. Marianne's journey to becoming a professional artist took several detours along the way. She studied anthropology and communications in New York. She worked in public relations. She attended fashion design school and once visited Nairobi, Kenya to teach sewing to women's HIV and AIDS groups. She started jewelry and clothing lines, and then she moved to New Orleans where she painted bridal and beauty illustrations for local magazines. So she has quite a bit of experience along the way. And I'm sharing these things with you because I want you to realize that you don't become an artist the second you graduate. You know, people aren't going to just pay large amounts of money for you to paint a mural on their wall. Um, to make some jewelry for them, to create a painting for their home. They're not going to pay money right off the bat. You have to work your way up to that point. And that's kind of what she did. She was tired of working small. She said, I didn't find that, li that very liberating. And, um, <clears throat> you know, she was doing a lot of freelance illustration gigs. And so she says that when I went to the store one day, I bought a larger canvas and I just started painting. It was such an amazing release and it felt like the truest expression of myself. She relocated to Covington, Louisiana five years ago and is still at it, filling her downtown gallery with high energy works influenced by the cultures of the many places that she lived. Here she talks art, inspiration, and how she's hit the creative stride in small town Louisiana. Marianne said that her art is an inspiration and a representation of all the influences that she's collected from living abroad. She says, I really love to look at ceremonial dress, like festival costumes. I enjoy studying sculpture, textile art, and jewelry, things that are tactile, and figuring out a way to translate that in paint. I want all my pieces to have an electric, worldly feel to them. I got curious and visited her website, and I found these beautiful painted pots that she sells. Aren't they wonderful? Um, each one, you know, they resemble the paintings. Each one has this little flare of color and has a different feeling and, you know, emotion to it. So I thought I would share these wonderful pieces with you. found a collection of some of her wonderful colorful pieces that she has in her gallery. Um, she says that she has a small circle of friends who are all creators she stayed in contact with during this whole weird year of the pandemic. We've had a conversation about art being essential versus non-essential. She says that she thinks that when they're, when you're in such a low moment, as we have all been during this pandemic, the things that brighten your soul are art, music, and food. 
Art is full of color and celebration. And she believes that everyone can find a sanctuary there. She says that art will speak to you differently when it's the right piece. She's learned that it's also important to think about who is living with you and will experience it. And she encourages families to come and select the art pieces together and ask questions about the art. Like, what do you see in this? How does this work make you feel? She thinks that that is such a lovely thing. Marianne has learned a few lessons along the way, and I wanted to read a quote from her. She says, I'm a first generation immigrant to the United States. My parents left my home country of the Philippines for better opportunities. So I think it was hard for them to accept that I was going into a creative career. The beautiful thing is that they let me figure it out. They taught me the meaning of integrity and exemplified what hard work can attain. Pursuing art through rebellious, in a sense, is a tribute to them. I wake up and think, wow, I can't believe I get to do this. I'm grateful every day. Thank you for learning about Marianne Angeli Rodriguez with me. I hope she inspires you to think about how our past forms our future, how our past can influence what art we create. For this assignment, I want you to take some time to think about that and write a few paragraphs explaining how your past has or can influence the art that you are currently creating or have created in the past. Please type your responses in a document and submit it to the assignment called Marianne Angeli Rodriguez Reflections.